All functioning circuits contain at least four essential elements, without which electric current will not flow in a useful way. The first of these essential components is an energy source, which provides the force that causes electrically charged particles to move. As we will see later, electric charges in motion constitute electric current. The second is a conductor, in order to provide a path for current to flow. Third, a circuit requires some form of insulation to prevent current from flowing where we don't want it to. This would cause a malfunction and probably a safety issue as well. Fourth, a functioning circuit must contain one or more loads. A load is any device in a circuit that converts electrical energy into some other form of energy such as heat or light or sound, for example. In addition to these four essential elements, there are two additional elements that may be considered optional. The first is a control device, usually a switch, that allows us to interrupt the current and therefore turn the circuit off when we don't want it to be operating. Although it is difficult to imagine a useful electrical device without such a switch, it is not necessary for current to flow in a circuit. Lastly, some form of protection device, such as a circuit breaker, prevents excess current from damaging other components of the circuit. As an example of a simple circuit, which is a circuit that has only one source and one load, consider the familiar flashlight. Here is a cross-sectional drawing of the flashlight. We will see that it includes all four essential elements of an electric circuit, plus a control device. The energy source in this circuit is a single cell or battery. The battery establishes a potential difference between its positive and negative terminals. This causes current to flow through the conductors, which in this case are not wires but metal parts of the structural system. For example, the metal spring is in contact with the negative terminal of the battery on one end and the metal case on the other. This creates a conductive path for current to flow through the metal structure of the flashlight. This path includes the metal leaf spring in the switch and the metal reflector that holds the bulb. We see that the circuit also contains insulators to prevent current from going where we don't want it to go, which would cause the flashlight to malfunction. Our circuit contains one load in the form of a light bulb, which converts electrical energy stored in the battery into light energy, and also some heat energy. This circuit also includes a switch as a control device, but it does not have a protection device. Now we will look more closely at how current moves through the circuit. The battery sets up the potential difference between its positive and negative terminals. Electrons, being negatively charged particles, are repelled from the negative terminal of the battery and move away from the negative terminal through the conductors. These include the metal spring and case, the metal leaf spring and the switch, assuming it's closed, and the metal reflector. Finally, the current flows through the load and back to the positive terminal of the energy source.